Okay, so today on the BSS 1250 channel, we have another basket case. This is a Burroughs adding machine. All right, I took the serial number down here, which you can't see. Um, serial number is 300,054. And according to a list I found online that pushed this machine, I think, and made it manufactured in 1916. So. This is over 100 years old. Um, two reasons I bought this machine. One of them being it has the old style Burroughs logo on it, which I like this all capital logo a lot better than most of these machines you see have the capital B and the rest is lowercase. But I like this logo a lot better. Um, and the second reason is it's a basket case, which hopefully means we can have an interesting video come out of this. Uh, if I bought a pristine one, basically it just already works and you don't have to do anything, which isn't that interesting. This one, we're going to have to take this apart. And I was looking online and I couldn't even find any pictures of what the mechanism looks like in here. So I'm curious to see the mechanism and I figured somebody else might be too. Um, there actually is a window. I had to scrape some of the grime away to make sure the window was actually there. You just barely see through, now oh, it's reflecting, but you can just barely see through one digit wheel down there. So the window is there. Um, when I first saw this machine, I thought that, that there might be a plate there instead of the window, but nope, it's just dirty. Um, as far as functionality, keyboard is locked or something. The keys don't stay, oh, that one's locked. That one seems free. The handle is not operating properly. Um, and there's some rust here, and there's some rust back here too. Um, I wish I could put my tripod higher, but the bottom of one of the legs is broken, so can't go any higher than this. There's some oily remains of paper in there. So we can take some of this off here, maybe. Uh, there's some kind of substance, almost just like cement or plaster or something on that. So the way these usually, well, at least some of the Burroughs machines come apart, is usually this whole cover, I only worked on a class three before where I do have a couple class fives. And with the solid body machines, usually you can take this whole cover off and it does seem a bit loose, um, but there's a lock on the front here and you have to have Burroughs special key to get in there. Now, sometimes you can use needle nose pliers, which I was successful with on my class five but this pin looks a lot bigger and it looks like there's a lot less space around the pin to get the pliers in there. So I'll have to see about that. Sorry, this machine is pretty heavy. It's at least 40, if not more pounds. Um, not much to see on that side, except some of the paint coming off there. So the PC is free. back. So I'm not quite sure what this is. Whatever it is, it's kind of crumpling off. We can't get some of that off. We can get the paper out. I'm not sure how much comes off with the top case. Smells like plaster. Okay, paper's out. Got a nice mess there now. Quite sure. Oh, looks like a pin. Look, there's supposed to be a pin on the end of here, which has sheared off in there. So that's unfortunate. Um, there's a metal 
cast piece here. Because like that's where, because this machine has a non-moving carriage. Some of the machines had a moving carriage so you could put a full sheet of paper in and then slide the carriage back and forth to put your numbers where you wanted them. And this one just has the simple non-moving carriage. I'm not sure if the carriage is attached to the main machine or if that will come off with the case. Let's take these out and see what happens. Maybe. This one instead. Maybe it shouldn't be. Well, it shouldn't be too tight. Oh, that one's coming out. Because the Bose people usually came around and serviced these machines occasionally. And that's true of a lot of the older machines. All the companies that service people, Monroe, Freedom, are coming around every so often to oil the machines. Was fixed them if they were broken. Okay, so those are out. So the case is free, but this looks like it's not going to come off with the case. So I'm gonna have to take this cast piece off here. Which, well, maybe we will anyway. Which kind of surprises me because I thought they would have made these as easy to service as possible for the service people. You wouldn't have to spend a lot of time disassembling and reassembling. So there's four screws in here. Of course, you can't know what I'm talking about because my tripod doesn't go high enough since it's broken. Hopefully these will be out soon. Yes. Okay, so all four screws are out of this now. So I'll take my cut out. There we go. There's a little cut here you have to line this up with to get it out. And you can see it's just two there and two there. The screws I took out, so I'll set that aside. So some packing peanuts up here. And there are first to go into the mechanism down there. Not quite sure what that is. So let's see if the oops the case is any more willing to come off now. That seems a lot better. Fortunately, the lock in the front is holding us up. So, I'm going to take a minute to see if I can figure out a way to get that unlocked. And try with the pliers. I'm not sure if you'll be able to get in there or not. Well, those ones certainly won't. So, let me play with that for a minute. Okay, so I've lifted up the case and then Tried to pry it a little bit with a screwdriver and it just popped right up. So it should hopefully come off now. Oops. That's coming out. I hope we don't have to pull those keys off. I'm just looking like I do have to. That's unfortunate. Wait. It'll come off. Okay. Yeah, there we go. That wasn't so bad. So the repeat key just came right off with the um, case there. So it looks like the machine is stuck forward. That was a nice cast piece there. See, this is the lock. So apparently, I, um, if you just pry up on the case, it'll just pop right past this. 
wonder if I could disable this somehow, so I'll have to do that in the future. Anyway. So you can see here that this is blocking the handle from going back any further. The handle stuck out here, so for some reason the machine is not wanting to return home. Looks like this piece is you see what I'm pointing at? Let me turn this up. So, in order for this to come back up, this has to go back, which means this has to rotate. And you can see here that it looks like that peg there is preventing that from happening. Well, this is just this little lock thing. No, I don't think it's that. So, looks like this might be I'm not sure, I'm not sure what that is. So these are all the the sliders and also the sliders that go under the keyboard. That design looks pretty similar to the um, the Victor that I worked on before. So let me spend a little bit of time just looking at what everything does here and see if we can get this unstuck. So I managed to get the handle to come back up most of the way, but that's not, that solution isn't the main solution to our problem. Um, this is just a ratchet, that wasn't what was holding it. What was holding it was there's a lock here that if the machine doesn't you know, complete a cycle, the handle won't come back up. Um, if I lift up the lock, I can pull the handle all the way forward, and I get stuck, unless I lift up the lock, then I can turn it all the way well, most of the way back, not going all the way back. Um, unfortunately, the only part that moves is this shaft across the back. The entire rest of the machine is completely jammed, which is why this won't go back all the way, because the rest of the machine, like this shaft down here and different things, are preventing this from going back all the way. So I'm just going to work on loosening a bunch of stuff up and see where we can go from there. Okay, so I have managed to get this shaft to rotate a bit more. I shaft across the, you can't really see that. Yeah, this guy right here, still can't see it. This guy right here, that's what was stuck before. Um, and that's driven by this level down here, which is attached to um, a piece around this shaft, which is driven by these springs. So basically when you pull the handle, these, this end of the springs, or one end of the springs, be this end probably, this end of the springs moves with this shaft when you pull the handle. And then the springs pull this, which pulls that lever which drives the shaft up front. Uh, it looks like part of the problem is this thing, um, which is unfortunate because this is the uh, dampener so that when you let go of the crank it doesn't just snap back. This is supposed to provide some drag. Well, it's really providing drag now. I can't get the shaft in here to move at all, so I've just taken it out for now. Yeah, which is pretty easy to do. There's a set screw in here and then you can just slide that shaft out and then this is free. Um, this is still not 100% well, it's not 100% working, but it's still not quite right as far as completing a cycle because you see I can start a cycle Actually, that didn't move that shaft at all. I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. Wait, I need to release this. Back, and now we're in the home position. So, when I saw the cycle, you can see that that thing moves a little bit, but it won't move very far, and that's because this down here this little flappy thing is catching on this pin. I'm not quite sure what this pin is supposed to be for just yet, but if I lift this up and then go, you'll see that the machine, this shaft in the front dropped all the way down because this dropped all the way down. So that shaft 
is now free. If I go back up, this goes back up. And now that's not in the right position, but that's okay. We're now in the home position. So this shaft actually seems free now. Um, I need to figure out though what is why this is trying to stop it from completing a cycle though. So making progress. Uh, these things are some of them are free. That one doesn't move at all. See that one moves. That one moves. That one's stuck. So I've sprayed some WD-40 on here to hopefully melt some of the grease. I also sprayed some WD-40 in here to see if that'll help, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that thing. Um, so I'm going to see if I can diagnose some more of the mechanism and find out why that pin is down there blocking it when it's not supposed to be, and we'll go from there. Okay, so it turns out that um, that piece that was that I thought was blocking it, well, that pin was blocking it, but I thought that this piece here had to lift up to free the pin. That's actually not true. Um, this the shaft that the or the lever that the pin was on was actually frozen in place. So normally it flexes just enough. See how it flexes a little bit there? So that when you pull the handle, see that I can push the pin forward just enough to get by it and then drive the machine through a cycle. And now that we've got that worked out, if you watch the register in the front, you see that's actually adding something now. So we have signs of life. I'm not sure if you saw it or not, but these things are starting to go too. Fortunately, it looks like these are the hammers and they're not coming down to hit it, but of course, these are the ones that are still stuck, so we'll have to free those up, but there are three that are stuck. Oh, we got stuck now. Right. Anyway, looks like we're figuring some stuff out. Not quite sure how it got jammed now, but there we go. Just got stuck on that somehow. But yeah, see how hard the handle snapped back now? That's because this thing wasn't there to buffer it, so. I have to see if I can get this freed up. I'm not sure that I will be able to, but anyway, we're getting somewhere. So next, I think I'm going to try and free these up, and then we'll have to figure out what's going on with the keyboard because um, theoretically, well, not theoretically, but if you have no numbers entered on the keyboard, these shouldn't come up at all, and yet they're all coming up to nine. So I think there's something up with that, but. This will be go from here. Okay, so I've been loosening up different stuff. I did get this freed up. Um, I put the bar back in and then tapped on a little bit and it came free. And then once this came down all the way, I cleaned up the shaft that was, the shaft that comes out of it. So that seems to be okay now. Um, I don't know if it actually does any dampening. Um, when you release the handle, it does come back up pretty fast. So um, I'm not sure if this actually does any dampening or just the natural resistance of the mechanism that's all that's slowing the handle down. But anyway, it is there and it's not stuck anymore. So as you can see, I've taken um, all the key plates off and I painted those in the paint is drawing. Or I cleaned them up first and painted them. Um, taking some of the rows of keys out. Um, I'm planning on taking these other ones out too. I th think you have to take them out to put them back in because what I think the way that they go back in is, um, let me show you one here. So this is what they look like. You can see the keys have slots in them and they ride on this shaft and then they have springs with pins on the bottom. And what I think you're supposed to do is like you start with one key, stick it in, then slide the, I'm not going to stick it all the way down there because I'm going to lose the spring, but I think you're supposed to stick one key in at a time and then slide the shaft through here one, one key at a time working your way back up. Seems to hopefully be how it goes back together. I won't be able to try that until the
paint is finished drawing and I can start because I think I'm going to put the bottom plate on and then slide the rows in and slide them all the way up putting each plate on as I go because the plates are all that hold the rows in you can see these slots are open there's these little shafts here but nothing holds them in so I can just lift it out only the plate holds it in once I screw the plate back on so that's going to have to wait till the plates are done drawing but I can start working on cleaning keys up. Um, I also wanted to do a little demonstration of how some of this mechanism works. Now you can see these are the sliders here. I've taken the register off the front. Um, these are the key locks. Well, not locks, but the detents. So that when you push a key down, this will swing out of the way and then lock the key down. Uh, the, as you can see all the way down in the bottom, there was a a little plate that stands up. That's my pointing device. See this right here. That's the lock. So when you drive the mechanism, those slide back to lock the keys in place so you can't enter a key while it's in the middle of a cycle. So let me see if I can demonstrate some of the stuff that goes on here. So on the side here, you can see we have a, this is thing here is just a ratchet. So when you pull the handle, see the handle won't go back until you drive it all the way. You can see this is starting to go down. So I'm not sure if the lock's engaged yet or not. So pull the handle down a ways. You can see that these have slid forward just a little bit. Um, and they only, they only slid forward a little bit because none of the keys have triggered these. So... Um, basically you have entered all zeros and so they're not going to slide down enter any number. Um, you can, I'm not sure if you can see but these things have slid back so you see I can move them there. So right now they're in the back position because the machine has started the cycle. See these things are the printers or the stamps rather and each individual stamps you can see you can push them forward and that's when they pop out to stamp. So let me do this with, we can just do all nines, I guess. So if I slide this piece here, this controls all of the rockers. So you can see I can slide it over and see all the rockers slide over. Now when I draw the mechanism, it should enter all nines. You can see it is, those slide all the way up and the sliders come all the way forward. Now if I hold this up, which might be hard to do with holding, while holding the camera, if I put the camera down maybe. If I hold this up and then drive it, these stampers will engage. See so there they go, they went forward and they've punched the little stamps forward. And I think this is activated when you have the, the carriage on. As you can see, this is tied to this and I think that this will be held down once I put the carriage back on. So I'm not, I don't think that's an issue yet. You can see the sliders down there as they slide back. I'm really surprised by how much empty space there is back here. There's really not a whole lot going on in this machine. There's definitely a lot more space to see what's going on compared with um, the Lago Marcino Totalia. I think this thing is what holds the rockers back, or the sliders back, rather. See, if I relock these, some of them just go back over. You can see that if I unlock them, this rod here. When that goes forward, the sliders come with it. 
So I'm not quite sure what exactly pulls the sliders forward. I mean, they must have spring tension on them somewhere, maybe under the keyboard. See if I, so if I don't go all the way, the, the mechanism will stop. See with the handle out here, and I should be able to, yeah, see, those are spring loaded, so I'm not quite sure where the springs are exactly, but they might be under the keyboard. I don't think I'm going to take this keyboard assembly off. I don't really think there's a reason to. Um, I'm just going to put a bunch of oil, I think, on the sliders so that they oil up their guides under the keyboard. And I think that'll be sufficient as far as that goes. Um, as far as the total key, which is here, doesn't want to stay down all day. I'm not sure if it's supposed to, or if you're supposed to have to hold it down and then hold, uh, pull the handle. But basically all that that does is it clears. So there's a piece here that's missing because I've taken the key plate off that holds it. But when you push total down, see all that little window? See that little window moves? There's an arm that goes through there. So when you push total down, it activates that lever, and that lever pushes this over to open up all the key rows, and that allows the sliders to slide back. They slide back until the register that they're driving hits zero, and then that clears it out to zero and also records the number that was present in it. So that's a pretty, pretty simple mechanism, and all it does on the side there, you can see that moving that moving arm there, that just affects the timing of this, which affects the timing of when the um, register drops down into drive mode. So it's really not that complicated of a machine. And put you on this side. So you can see this is what controls when the register drops down. So. Held out like this, so it goes back and then forward. Not, not a whole lot of movement on it, but what that connects to is this thing right here that connects right in here, and then when that drives, see it just that just pops the register up and down. which engages and this engages these gears on each wheel from these sliders down here. And these sliders have little spring-loaded things on the front of them. Oops, that one's about to pop off. Uh, those are for the carries. So if the register is engaged, and I spin, and I spin this one past uh, and see how this popped out as a carry flag. It's not the most obvious, but see how this one's down further and the one next to it. So this one's to the carry. That's going to catch on here. And I'm not exactly sure quite how it works, but that's going to cause the carry to go over to the next column. See, so this register, which is right here, is going to catch on this pin, and then this tooth, or this slider here, drives the next column over. Um, I don't think there's a really a lot else for me to say about this. Really, it's really a pretty simple machine. Basically, when you pull the handle, it just, or when you're doing a regular ad, you pull the handle, it'll drive the sliders down until they're stopped by the keyboard, and that will drive the register forward the number of positions that was set, and also cause this to raise up to the correct character. And then these are the hammers that stamp the number in. So that's really about it. Um, and then total just clears up the keyboard and then allows these sliders to slide down until the register hits zero. And yeah. So uh, I think from here I'm going to, we're gonna wait a couple days for the paint to dry. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to clean up all these keys and I see if I can get some more of the dirt out of the bottom here, but everything seems pretty free.
So I hope, I hope that uh, clears up how these machines work. It's really not super complicated. And this thing here, which was what we were stuck on the first time, um, that is a catch so that if you pull the handle all the way out, but the rest of the mechanism isn't fast enough, like if you pull the handle super fast, faster than this dampener will allow the rest of the mechanism to move, that locks it until the rest of the mechanism catches up and then you can return the handle. That's just uh, an extra safety to make sure that the machine fully completes the cycle instead of going halfway there. Um, which is another reason why I'm kind of questioning this because if I let go of the handle, it's pretty fast. So I'm not sure if it's supposed to be that fast or if this thing has somehow lost its viscousness. But anyway, I think it'll work. I mean, I'm not planning on letting go of the handle. I just use it to do a nice slow motion. So I think we'll be okay. Um, so yeah, hopefully the next time you see this machine, it will have its keyboard be installed. Okay, so I wasn't really satisfied with the performance of this thing. I think it was dampening as much as it should. And I thought these were filled with oil. So I poured some oil in a little uh, dish in the top. And after I worked it down, worked the handle a couple times, the oil uh, sank down in. Uh, but then it didn't want to work at all. It would get stuck. Um, initially when you pull the handle, this wouldn't go anywhere. And so you tap a little bit, then it would start going. So I took it apart. And this is what, what's inside it. It's like just a little piston there. And then this is the, the top cap here. And it looks pretty nasty. Um, I wiped out the oil that was in here and put some alcohol in and wiped out the bottom. And that's what was on the bottom of the cylinder here. So, um, I'm going to clean this up and see if I can figure out how it's supposed to work. There is a groove here, so it's very possible there's supposed to be some kind of O-ring that is missing. And I see two holes there. So let me see if I can figure out how this is supposed to work. Whether it's supposed to have oil in it, or they're supposed to have air in it. I'm not quite sure. See, there are holes that come through from the top. So that's probably at least for air entry. I'm not sure supposed to fill you with oil or not. Let me get this cleaned up and see if I can figure out what it's supposed to do. So I'll clean this up. Um, I think it is supposed to be filled with oil because these two holes here are hollow all the way through. So I'm thinking what's supposed to happen is when you when this plunger starts to go down, oil is going to go up through these two holes and hit against these baffles and slow the descent of the piston. And the same thing on the way back up too, same idea. Because um, if you put it in now with just air, I mean there's just no no drag there at all. And I think the issue I was having when I put some oil on the top here is because these holes were plugged, the only way for oil to go was up around the side of the piston and that was just way too much drag. So I'm going to put some oil in here just a little bit and then make sure that the piston is movable and if it is I'm going to fill Probably most of the way up with oil. We'll see how that works. So now I filled up with oil and now it has a nice amount of drag. See how slow that goes down? Yeah, it's definitely more what I'm looking for out of that. So we put this pin back in here. And then you just have to line it up so that it fits in this key right here. Like that. And there's a set screw that goes in. I'll put that in when I'm done. Now, if I pull the handle all the way down and release it, it goes back much slower than it did before. And before it was slamming back. I think I demonstrated that. Now, that's a nice amount of drag. So 
So I'm going to call that fixed as far as this goes. Um, I don't know what happened to all the oil that wasn't in originally. Of course, if I wake up to put a little oil on the floor tomorrow, I'll know. But, um, you know, I've never taken one of these apart before. So it's interesting to see that that's all that is inside it is just that, that piston with the two holes and baffles. So, if you have a machine that the handle snaps back on, just take a look at this thing and see if it's out of oil. Or if, the, if this thing is completely stuck, see if it's all come up with junk inside. And I'm not sure, this is the kind of stuff that came out of it, just chunks of something. I don't think that's dried oil, but I guess it could be. I'm not sure why the oil would evaporate and leave that behind, this whole cylinder, but anyway, it's fixed now. So I'm going to go ahead and take the keyboard out, as you can see. And the reason I did that was so that I could get the printer driver mechanism out. There's four screws on the bottom of the case there, and then this whole mechanism comes out, and you're left with just the... Um, the lockers here with the, the dies on the front of them. Um, so I took that out, took it all apart, cleaned it all up, and so you can see it's nice and shiny now. Of course, these are still, the lockers here are still dirty because they didn't come out to get cleaned, but it's nice and shiny, everything is down there. So that's all cleaned up. Um, there's still some dirt on the side here, but I can, I can clean it up while it's back in. I wanted to put it back in to make sure I could get it back in before I forgot where everything went. As you can see, the mechanism works, and if I hold this up, it'll print. And if I push down total and hold this up, oops, I forgot. In order to get total, you have to, you have to add nothing first, and then you can push total down. Hold this up. You see now all the hammers go forward and print the total indicator. That's what this last rock is over here. That prints whether it's total or subtotal. And I think there's also one for um, non-entry, which is interesting because this machine doesn't seem to have a non-entry key. So that might have been um, just a holdover from a version of the machine that did have it. I haven't seen machines like this that have more keys than what mine has. So. Perhaps one of those keys is not entry. I'm not sure what other kind of features they had. Whether some of them have subtraction or not, I don't know. Um, anyway, so I'm going to finish cleaning this up and put it back together. Uh, these things, which are the ribbon holders, they came off the sides. Somehow this one's, this one's been on this side, yeah. We'll go in like that. And then these, these things on the back here wrap around that shaft in the back. So I'm going to finish cleaning this up. You can see it's still pretty dirty. I'm going to finish cleaning that stuff up, put it back together. And I think what I'm going to do is set the keyboard on here. As the keyboard comes off as a whole assembly like this, just the four screws hold it on. So then I'm going to set that back on. And when I have it set on, I'm going to put the the key plates and the keys back in just so that there, there is some space under it since the keys are going to have to poke through poke through these holes in the bottom as I put them on. And I'm going to take that back off I think and well maybe I won't. I guess I wouldn't really have to. Well we'll see. Uh, the first step is to get all of this, the rest of the stuff here reassembled and we'll see where we go from there.